Have you ever wondered what it might be like if you were fully invested in just one troop type in Rise of Kingdoms and that's all that you could use in the open field? Well, today we're going to chat with another YouTuber who goes by the name of Archer Syndicate. We actually fought against each other in this KVK. I talked about that in a previous video. It was honestly an insane KVK. So I wanted to invite him on here to talk a little bit about what the strategy is for his account, some advice that he could give to Archer players, whether or not you should be a purist for a troop type. And we also talk about the current state of the meta in rise of kingdoms the open field meta the direction it should go in and a lot more but first what's going on guys cheers now of course before we jump in archer syndicate's youtube channel is going to be in the description below so make sure you go over there and subscribe to his channel anyway uh i wanted to get you on here i feel like we had a, a fun well a honestly a crazy kvk one of the craziest that i think i've been in that i can even remember what about you oh there's definitely like probably one of the funnest and craziest kvks i've been in like for sure lots of fighting and everything oh yeah this is probably top two top three like craziest kvks i think i've been in so dude even after like a day of king's land fighting i was like i still don't know who's gonna win <laughs> so. for sure i mean there were so many moments where either side could have won it was so crazy yeah yeah i mean even being in discord and calls and stuff and we're just like damn this might be it, man. This, this, it could be over. So yeah, I had a really <laughs> good time. Uh, I feel like we had really great allies and enemies. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty even KVK actually, which is always fun. Yeah. There's no like one side. Oh yeah, for sure. One of the things that I, that I realized though, cause you know, obviously I, I think I saw you on the field a couple times, like, you know, you were scouting my city and stuff and I was like, oh look, he's online. It seems like you only use archer marches right yeah of course i mean that's the whole that's the whole point of this account i run really just to only use archer marches right like and obviously you know that kind of was like a stupid question coming for me because like it, your name is literally <laughs> archer syndicate but like <laughs> you're like you're not messing around like you're literally only archers yep only archers i've put some gold heads in richard so i guess it broke the rule but really otherwise it's only an archer commander uh, we, everyone knows that's the peacekeeping commander right there that's that's fine so you're an archer purist so i don't even have guan yu or cpo unlocked i mean i've got literature unlocked but other than that i don't have nevsky unlocked on this account i mean it's just archer commanders really so wait how many accounts do you have i mean i've got literally only this account <laughs> okay yeah so you're an archer purist when did you start playing what year oh it would be like l mid 2020 i think around june okay do, were you a uh, a pandemic player pretty much yeah i started during covid in lockdown got a couple ads i was like yeah i'll try it out and then i got hooked so that's where nice. i am now so you you're one of the people that saw one of the crazy ads and you were like i'm gonna give that a try i saw one of the crazy ads and now i'm a thousand dollars in so they worked on me pretty well Ooh baby so have you seen any of the videos that i did kind of just like reacting to some of the crazy ads oh uh, i probably i think i've seen one of yours maybe i think one of them yeah yeah one of them about like um the like the really controversial ad they ended up making oh okay yeah so that one was like the more the more popular uh like i guess episode of that series that i did but yeah one of the things i always wondered is like man who sees these ads and then downloads it but to be fair they do have some ads that are actually good like i think some of the viking ads were pretty cool back in the day yeah the viking ads are pretty cool i saw one of like the really wacky ads i was like what is this game i've got to see what it is so i guess the the wackiness worked on me Oh my God. So you're one of them. All right. So I have a couple questions questions here that are, that are written down. So I guess since you're an archer purist, well, I, I kind of reviewed the account of Wout gaming a few at this point, probably a few months ago, and he's basically a infantry purist. And so that's kind of where I came up with the idea. Didn't really take that much brain power, but I was like, let's just do a video <laughs> talking about being an archer purist. So do you think that's a good strategy? going all in on archers just archers just archers i mean it's a workable strategy if it's good probably not i mean the other commanders like other troops and all that they've got such meta commanders mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense to fully go all in on archers but it does have some benefits that go with it like i remember back in the day like back you know 2019 20 even 2020 probably there were a lot of people that would go pure all in on one march or on one troop type because there were some advantages to that so you know with your city skin and all, all those types of things but then you know as the power creep came through with all the troop types it was like okay wait a minute i can't really not run nevsky right so that's kind of where i you know in 2024 i'm like wow okay people people are still purists for troop types i thought that was really interesting it's definitely much rarer nowadays but i think we might be moving back towards a bit of a purist meta I think okay. Belisarius kind of alludes to it. He's kind of like a more niche cavalry only commander. So maybe we'll see it again. I wouldn't be surprised. Interesting. Yeah. You know what would be really interesting is if, you know, because people do, if they run a seven March lineup, they do three, two, two. Typically, some people are moving over to two, 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 one with ranged. But what if we saw like a 
four two one it's early in the morning jesus where they go like super all in on on one but they just bring like the actual only meta for the other two types i mean that could also be pretty interesting that's more of a whale strat i mean my account i'm i'm not like a whale i'm running three marches but that definitely could be mm -hmm. pretty unique going like four marches of one troop type i think the sweet spot's three for one troop type because that's where they're like strongest Mm -hmm. And fours where you get the slightly weaker commanders, but maybe over time we'll see a bit of a shift towards four marches. Because I mean, most of the current commanders that are being released for com like troops, they're not really being pushed out the meta. I mean, Boudicca is pretty old; she's still pretty good. Same with Nevsky and CPO. Yeah, that's true. So you run three marches. What what are the three marches that you run? Currently, I run I run Zulang with Herman. I mean, that's given. It's very overpowered. Yep. Then I run Boudicca and Shabani Pal, and I run Henry with YSG at the moment. That's like my main three ball. So you're not running. Nebu at all. I used to run him. He's mm -hmm. only like five five two two right now, and he's he's just he's not that good compared to like a Shobani pile, and he's not worth the Galtids over a YSG, so He's pretty much benched for now. Yeah, Ashurbanipal was a pretty shameless, like, uh, just straight up better version of, of Nebu. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just a Nebu copy, put his expertise on the active skill, give him a new expertise, release him. Yep, basically. So you you expertise Ashurbanipal? Oh, yeah, I've expertise him just like in our King's Land, actually. I think day two is when I maxed him oh, out. Oh, okay. So he's a new one for it. How did he do? Honestly, he was pretty good. I mean, whenever I could get his skill cycle to go off with Boudicca, mm -hmm. it would just like shred a march. It mm -hmm. is also pretty, he's pretty fast. So I actually, he's pretty probably one of my star star marches with Boudicca. I think Henry YSG would be my weakest one though. Yeah, I can see that being the case. Henry not having a debuff on the active skill and being single target, I think really does, you know, now that we have Ashurbanipal in the game for open field, Henry is like, okay, you don't really need him anymore. That's kind of how I feel about it. I would almost- Yeah, Henry's- Oh yeah, go. I would almost think about running Nebu over Henry at this point, but- I mean, that's a little bit of a min max. You can figure that out another time. Okay, so you run three archer marches, only archer marches. What are the pros to being a purist here? Like, do you, do you see any any like big advantages to only running archers? I mean, there's a few big advantages. Some are like archer only advantages, some aren't. First one, this is like all troop types. You don't have to gather every resource because each troop type only needs two resources. Yeah. If you're pure, like a purist, yeah. you only need to get two. So calves, for example, think they're like stone and food or something, mm -hmm. infantry or, or wooden food. So if you're puring, you don't have to gather one of the other resources, which saves you a lot of gathering time and it can make you much richer. Mm -hmm. And then obviously city skins. I mean, they usually disadvantage a troop if you're puring or at least only running two troop types. Mm -hmm. you can usually get around that and civilization for archers especially the ottoman empire is just crazy overpowered so that's that's another like real big advantage to it just having that really op civilization that goes with it and it's just going to allow you to get a massive bonus because you're running only the special unit in your murder ball, so you're getting pretty good trades all around usually that's what i've main bonuses i've noticed especially towards the end game those ones mostly i was thinking about that the other day too because obviously with belisarius coming out you know i run a lot of simulation testing just to see how things are doing and it's like man that ottoman empire special unit really like it really puts archers above because you know pretty much every troop type will use ottoman unless you're like all in on smite damage and then you go france or something like that but like most players are running ottoman and uh yeah to be pure pure special units feels really good i'm sure it definitely does i mean it just gives you such an advantage just the special units overpowered and the civilization's crazy strong as well yeah i'm curious to know what they're going to do this year for the for the new civ i assume there's going to be that they, they teased it a few months ago i wonder if it's going to be calves and if it is it's going to be maybe open field focus could we have perhaps a challenger to ottoman empire for being open field meta i mean that would be interesting i think maybe even a siege civilization even mm. though it sounds crazy could be mm. interesting just because that's kind of in the lineup really because siege are making like not a comeback but they're really rising up recently yeah this is going to be their first their first arrival basically to the scene which is interesting what yeah. about armaments do you find any advantage to being a purist for armaments or it's just too rng to matter oh armaments being a purist is an absolute <laughs> disadvantage the amount of like triple cav and triple infantry stuff i've got like triple stats that i just can't use yeah it, it is definitely it's more of a disadvantage when you look at the armaments honestly so that's probably one of the bigger disadvantages there yeah i i can't tell you the amount of uh purely siege armaments that i have and i'm like oof one day maybe one day we'll, we'll use you but until then yeah, it feels bad. I mean, the siege hurt even more. They're, 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 v, they're not even V formation most of the times. So you can't even use them. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The skill damage siege is a, that's a rough one. So, okay. So what about, are you going to be a Pierce forever? 
do you think? Or are you going to, after this KVK, branch out to a different troop type or what, what's going on? In terms of being purist forever, I mean, before I started YouTube, I was a purist account. Now that I've started YouTube, I'm even deeper in the hole. So I probably wouldn't stop being a purist. I've contemplated it before. I mean, with the release of Joan Prime, she almost made me invest in her mm -hmm. just because her, like, her skill kit is something I really like, just like quick bursty damage. Mm -hmm. But really, otherwise, I haven't had much temptation to like switch out of the purest meta, even though it's obviously weaker than going mix just because I do YouTube now. And because before I used to do it and I'm too deep in now, like I don't even have max infantry tech. I don't think I'd go out of like being a purist account. So you don't have max infantry like city technology, like account technology. I meant to say max cav technology. I don't have max cav technology, no. It's like level four on plate armor out of 10. But my infantry, I do have T5 infantry. I forgot about that. I got it recently. Wow, that's crazy. So I, I can respect that. You're 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 dedicated to the cause here. And I think too, like, you know, as they release more KVKs where you can, with artifacts, you can change the troop type of commanders. I think that kind of gives you a little bit more flexibility because like, you know, would it be breaking your purist strategy if you, let's say, invested in Joan of Arc Prime just to change her to you know uh, an archer commander and then use her as a secondary in those kvks you know i mean i could do that i don't think i would say it's not breaking the purest thing as long as i didn't run it with actual calves mm. but i think it's a bit too situational right now i mean there's a there's a few kvks with this switching troops but there's just not enough to like go oh yeah i'd do that it's just a bit, a bit risky because otherwise she's like completely useless to me sitting on the bench yeah that's true okay so i got a couple questions for you know i think you just know archers better than me because you run them more first question what do you think is the minimum sort of viable gear set that you can start to fight in the open field in in season of conquest like back in the day people would say oh just get the whole revival set and then you'll be good to go i think now with iconic tiers it's like okay you you kind of need some legendaries to get decent trades like where do you think that line is i think the line's definitely shifted up with like the the whole iconic thing like it's much more difficult to fight a whale with epic gear you can get away with it maybe if it's fully talented mm -hmm. really i think the minimum i would try and get a dragon breath chest plate like at least have that mm -hmm. and maybe get like a legendary accessory or two like maybe the ring of doom or Horn of fury mm -hmm. and then you could start to try and run them up just because legendary accessories are a massive upgrade Mm -hmm. And then the Dragon Breath plate's going to pop you with like an extra 11% health, which is just always great. So there's really no reason to not have those two pieces. And then after that, I mean, you could go for something like Leadership Legs, maybe, or if you can get a KVK weapon, those would be like the first beginning equipments you'd like try and get on the march but really like pure usability i'd go just a dragon breath chest plate and a legendary accessory just as like a beginning set yeah that was kind of where i started too my idea was like okay i'm gonna replace the the revival chest piece with dragon's breath which means i'm gonna lose the four piece set bonus anyway so i might as well get another one so i did i went with gloves and i got super lucky they both crit on first craft and i was like oh my god but yeah i still have two purples in my in my lineup here for my Juge Leong herman and it still performs really really well in the field so i think you don't a lot of players are saying you know you need at least all legendary to even start fighting and it's like ah I think that's I think that's a little bit much. I think you could probably work with a couple purples. I mean, I don't even run all legendary on all my marches. One of them's got all legendary. Another one will have all legendary soon. And my Boudicca, she's got three epic pieces. Mm -hmm. My Henry as well has got three, no, two epic pieces. You got a helmet and the boots that I'm going to replace soon. Yeah. So, OK, so good. You've basically confirmed that you can still run purple pieces and you'll be fine, even if you're a purist. OK, the other big question for archers, new players, do they get YSG? Now that that's a tough question to answer. Mm -hmm. I have really got like two answers to that. Mm -hmm. There's yes and there's no. It depends on what you want to do. Yeah. If you want to do a bit of a short term advantage where you really do get to enjoy that KVK one and two experience, mm -hmm. you need to get YSG. I mean, if you want to get archers in Season of Conquest, you're going to probably you're not really going to need YSG. But if you have him, you can use him. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have YSG in KVK one and two, you're gonna struggle. I mean, it's gonna be a rubbish time because mm -hmm. you're gonna be running just double epic commanders, really. Like, you're gonna run like Herman Kusunoki. It's pretty average, if not bad, really, in those, especially season two, where it really starts to fall off. Mm -hmm. So, if you wanna be able to do fighting in that KVK, you're gonna need to get YSG. But then you're hurting yourself in the end game because, I mean, YSG, nowhere near as strong as like Zulang or Herman. Like, they're way stronger. And then if you skip YSG, you're gonna screw yourself up in the early game. So, it's really, if you want that short term value and you really want to enjoy the KVK one and two, go for YSG. You kind of have to expertise him if you're going to end up investing in him. Otherwise, it's a waste of gold heads. 
mm-hmm. and then end up just slowly working on an archer march and eventually bench the YSG. Mm-hmm. Or if you want to just stick it through the tough times with the double epic commanders, you can do that. And then when you hit Season of Conquest, double expertise the two meta commanders or get close to that and you'd be in a better position. So long term, I wouldn't invest in YSG. But if you want to enjoy KVK 1 and 2, mm-hmm. you probably should invest in him. That is pretty much the thought process that i've had too obviously he helps a lot in the early game you can use him for chaining and it kind of helps with the transition in the season of conquest because like you said he's not useless in season of conquest he's just not meta but you kind of are disadvantaged once you get there because you did spend all those sculptures man i really wish his relic had like 10 percent march speed or something just to make him like a little faster in the field man i feel like that would do so much for him yeah open field would be great and why i mean open field speed would be great and YS- ysg but um Maybe if he gets a third tier on Relic, we might see something new. I mean, they're doing third tier for some of the infantry now, aren't they? Like Martel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you run Zhuge Liang with YSG? Have you tried that in the field? I have, actually. I've done it a few times. It's usually the only time I run it, city popping, or when I'm running it as a solo march, mm-hmm. and I'm able to really micromanage it. It can work. Mm-hmm. But you have to be like really on point with your micromanaging. Like if you slip out of your murder ball at all, it's like that's it. Sad face march back to your city and your trades ruined. But if you do it right, you mm-hmm. can get some crazy trades like 2 million kill points your side to like 200k on the enemies. Mm-hmm. But it is a little bit like luck based and a little bit if you've got open field dominance. Otherwise, you're going to get pretty bad trades with the march. Yeah, that's why, again, I feel like he really needs the march speed because that would be it would be so nice to have a faster YSG in Season of Conquest because then you could justify, you know, going all in on him and then saying, oh, well, you can pair him with Zhuge Liang and he's like, at least, you know, he would be at least as fast as Boudicca Prime with Zhuge Liang, that sort of thing. But he's just, even Boudicca, Zhuge Liang feels so slow to me. It's just, oh my God, dude, it's it's so sad. I mean, yeah, Boudicca, Boudicca's a bit lackluster on March speed. Funny enough, I think Herman's kind of bought YSG back a little bit mm-hmm. because Herman's got some March speed. You can invest in him. YSG is kind of a rage engine. Mm -hmm. And then later you bench the YSG and Herman with Zulane and you got a pretty good march. Yeah, I've actually had a lot of people comment like on videos and stuff saying that Herman YSG is actually a pretty good open field march. The only downside is it gets targeted right away because they see the Herman. And also I was doing some just this was last night. I was sim testing seven marches and the Herman YSG does seem from a DPS perspective to be like insane. But the survivability is the only the only uh, issue there, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, with my murder ball, even just because I'm running all archer marches, mm-hmm. the AOE I take is insane. So, like, how squishy the commanders are is definitely something you'll notice. And Herman YSG, there's, like, nothing tanky in there besides Herman's fourth skill, which isn't very good value for, like, your gold heads. So, yeah. definitely, the squishiness on Herman YSG is something you're going to notice. Just the AOE damage you'll take is insane. Like, sometimes you'll just get wrecked by AOE before you even deal damage. Mm -hmm. especially in like AC KVKs. You actually bring up a really good point there, and I didn't even think about this until now, but have you tried Herman Prime at 5551? And if so, do you think that players should expertise him or not? Funny enough, I actually, I expertised Herman within like two minutes of his release. I did a speed run, so I never got to actually use him at 5551. But from personal experience, seeing his expertise in action, I haven't been able to obviously remove his fourth skill, but his expertise, it looks good on paper. It's pretty useless. Unless you're rage chaining really, really well, mm-hmm. you're never going to inflict 25 stacks of poison on the open field. Like you're going to end up out of combat or the march is going to die, whatever it may be. I maybe got five double active skills in this whole KVK when I was running him. So I recommend nowadays 5551 is like the best spot. It's similar to Boudicca Prime where the expertise, it's nice, not really needed. And the fourth skill with Herman, a bit more for longer fights. You won't really get too much value on the open field unless there's a ton of Herman Primes. And in that situation, you are usually going to kill the march before they do a ton of damage to you at least. Yeah, that was, you know, I had a very similar experience. I kind of just went all in on Herman. And then, you know, a lot of people are like, well, wait a minute, can I run him 5 of 5 one And I'm like, probably but i can't say from actual experience but i think you're you're right with the expertise where it's like you need to get like you need to pop like three active skills or more without losing your rage in order for this to even work which just in practice if you're in a big murder ball like that's really uncommon that you're going to be fighting that long to do it and the fourth skill the fact that you still inflict poison even just by unlocking it i feel like kind of makes it so like 
you get most of the value out of it just by leaving it at one pretty much. Yeah, it's very similar to I think Lu Chu or maybe Gorgo has a skill that's kind of like that where you just need it to be unlocked to get mm -hmm. value from it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a fourth skill, maybe a third skill, but yeah, Herman Prime is similar to that. You get the poison stacks. Actually, no, it's similar to Zhu Lang's second skill where he can remove the silence even though it's level one. So he doesn't really need the fourth skill for its full value. I mean, it's got the nice damage reduction there. There's lots of Hermans you can benefit from it, mm -hmm. but it's probably not worth like 320 gold heads. You'd rather put them in a newer commander or another archer commander if that's what you want to do. Oh, for sure. Especially if you're a newer player just jumping into Sock too. You have so much to work on. Okay, so I guess that moves on to the next question. How do you feel about archers in general right now? Like as a troop type, like do you think that they're in a really good spot or or what what do you what would you say the consensus is there? Well, as of recording right now, I mean Belisari as Prime's not in the game. Cavs are kind of lackluster, if we're being fully honest. They're like, do good damage and all, but mm -hmm. Nevsky loses to Zulang Herman in 1v1s usually. So mm -hmm. Archers right now, I mean, they're kind of in a really good position. They mm -hmm. just got the commander release, really, the meta ones. And um, they're just, just in a really good spot, even though they've got the in my opinion, weakest actual troop. I mean, infantry usually get more march speed and stuff just because of how much damage they're dealing at the moment and they're kind of unchecked. The Cavs aren't really stopping them. Mm -hmm. You can you get away with archers pretty well right now even just three marches like I am. So first of all, I think the Cav mains are going to be very upset with that in the comments below. <laughs> but um, I do think you're right, actually. I think that archers are in a really good spot. I think a little more march speed on there. Like, for example, if Asher Bonapal's second skill, if he got 15% march speed all the time not just outside of territory i would almost consider investing in him personally just because i have so many sculptures and i don't know what to do and then i would just run two archer marches but i don't know i'm i'm really on the fence there but i think they're in a good spot right now for sure so what would you if you had to rank for open field performance infantry cavalry archers what what, what would be first second and third place there i think right now and mm -hmm. i'm gonna anger more cav mains here when i say this open mm -hmm. field performance if we look at like two marches that's usually what people run yeah I think archers would be number one, just because you've got the Zulang Homan, crazy debuffs. Mm -hmm. and then you can get Boudicca, Sherbani Pala. You've got really good single target damage with an AoE and a really good debuff. Mm -hmm. And there's no real calves to stop them. Second would be infantry. I mean, Gorgo with Leo Chora's OP. Mm -hmm. One with CPO. It's literally three AoE commanders in that murder ball. Yep. They've all pretty much got very decent debuffs. And the last would probably be Cavs. You've got two AoE commanders. One of them's William. He's super old. So you're running like Nevsky, Joan, Houcha being William. Mm -hmm. Very old commander there with William. Joan is very good still. Her damage is starting to get a little bit outclassed. And Nevsky, very good still, but he's also starting to see, not really being outclassed, but he's starting to not deal as much damage or be as meta as he used to be. So I think Cavs are currently last, but to be fair, Belisarius hasn't been released yet when I'm recording this with you. So yep. that may change when Belisarius releases. Maybe he shoots them right up to number one. Maybe he knocks them up above infantry. We'll have to see once he's like fully in the game. But at the moment, I think it's archers, infantry, then Cavs. Ooh, see, you know what? I think I'm biased. I think I would flip archers and infantry, but I'm, a, I'm more of an infantry main than archers anyway. So of course I would say that. But I think you're right about the, I mean, the thing with Nevsky, right, is he's he's very tanky. He has the skill tree and his debuff on the active skill. Those three things make him so good. But if you look at Nevsky's himself, his damage output, it's actually not that great, right? Like it's 2300, sure, but it's not AOE. And there's no instant proc here. There's no damage over time. There's like, you know, really nothing else there. And so, yeah, I'm, I think you, you're right there. I think Cavs might be in third place for open field performance. And I don't think it's by that much though, because even still, like in this KVK, I ran Huo Joan for a bit, especially in Kingsland, and it did really, really well. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how Belisarius, if he changes anything. Um, I personally do not think he's going to change anything. I think he'll be great for whale swarming things. And that's that's pretty much it. I mean, yeah, Belisarius might not change much. But yeah, like you said, with the top three, it's super close. It's like minuscule differences. I think infantry archers could easily be swapped. Cavs could arguably be, be better than one of the troop types. It's just super close. It's, the meta is fairly balanced right now. There's no like absolute dominant march and there's no like absolute rubbish troop type like when Sargon was in the game, like meta in the game. Oh, yeah. So I think it's it's relatively close now. There's no like crazy OP side. I think you're right too. I think this is probably the most balanced the three troop types have been in the field in a very long time. This is kind of just like a side tangent here. I, you mentioned that you watched some Rise of Kingdoms ads and then now you're not free to play. Is that true? <laughs> 
That is true, yeah. So how would you classify yourself? Low spender, mid spender, well? I mean, I've spent, if we do like over my whole entire time with the Siege account I did that was a failed video project, mm. I've spent about a thousand Australian dollars. It's like 60 cents US a day-ish. So oh. I think that's probably around like the higher end of the lower spending thing. I'm not free to play, obviously. I don't think I'm a medium spender. I only really buy a supply depot and I'll maybe spend a bit more around recharge, but that's really about it. Oh, and premium season crystal supply for KVK, mm -hmm. but that's about where I like stop. I don't spend much more than that. A thousand Australian dollars is like what? 650 US dollars, something like that. Yeah, something something close to that right now. So if you've spent 650 total dollars since 2020, I would say that's definitely a, a respectable low spender for sure. Yeah, like and it's, it's not too much money. Plus, YouTube, I allow myself to justify spending a little bit more. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's less than $200 a year, right? So, I mean, that's, I think that's pretty good. I mean, maybe I'm just, that's copium for me because I've definitely spent more than that. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, whatever. But I would say, my advice, don't increase your spending. Just leave it right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking here because once you get above the like 250 US dollars a year ish, you get the lower value bundles like instant bundles or pop ups and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's not as good value. So I think that's like the best spot. You get Supply Depot, Season Crystal Supply, buy some stuff and recharge and you're like pretty much set. I think so too. We know archers are in a good spot now. Right now, I think the reason they're in a good spot is because a lot of them are all in on AOE and historically AOE has been the meta. What do you want to, what would you, like if Lilith reached out to you today and said, what do you want to see from archers next? Would you want them to do something interesting or do you want them, do you think the AOE path is like, that's good. Let's have more of that. You know, it's funny enough. This might be my might bit of a side. This may be a bit of a side tangent. You don't have to put it in. But I think AOE right now is a bit out of control. There's just so much AOE on the open field that oh, yeah. when you're outnumbered on the field, you can't like come back at all because they just wipe you out with AOE damage. Mm -hmm. So if we moved away from AOE, I don't actually think it would ruin the open field that much. I'm not saying like get rid of it, but a bit less. So I think maybe, funny enough, archers should probably get another single target commander, like Boudicca Prime style, yep. where they've got a really good debuff, they've got good stats, similar to like Nevsky, yep. and they can just be a good primary <laughs> to an AoE commander, and you don't really need another AoE. But that being said, I mean, YSG is my current weakest commander, and he's probably out of the top six, he's ranked six, so he's next to be replaced. Yep. And if you add a commander like Boudicca, you're going to have to put Boudicca or the new commander with like a YSG AOE type commander. Right. So I think archers need another AOE commander to go with like a Henry. But then I don't know if we should give one to the game, like to like make the meta balance. So I'm not I'm a bit like on the fence with that. We could get a single target. I think it would be cool to have a new debuff like that. Or we could get an AOE and I wouldn't be like too surprised if they did do that. Yeah, I think that might be probably their thought process with Belisarius Prime, if I'm being honest. I feel like if Cavs got another Joan of Arc Prime, but it was power crept, I feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're going down a path quickly where it's like, I mean, with Liu Che, he's five target 2250. Like, that's kind of crazy. So if we're going to go higher than that, it's like you really couldn't even use single target commanders at all at that point. I mean, yeah, and he came right out like straight off this Yule Lang. It was just crazy how quick we got another AoE five target with more damage. It is definitely a little bit, bit crazy how much AoE we're getting. I think Lil wants to like calm the farm on that a bit. I don't know if they're going to release many AoE commanders like for the next few cycle, like cycles at least. I think infantry needed Liu Che, but it was definitely a, clearly a power creep there, which, you know, that's, that's a little, we, we can't keep doing that. Otherwise you're going to need to b bring more troops to the open field just to even be able to leave your city basically, you know, pretty much. I mean, I run small marches. They're like 320 K troops. I go out in the murder wall. I'm down to like 250 K within the first five seconds. It's kind of insane. Right? Yeah. If you're out of position for even two, three seconds, like you're yellow. So time to go home. Even if you get unlucky, I mean, if your murder ball is like smaller, because you guys had bigger murderballs than us most of the time. The AoE, you just eat insane because if someone tanks an active skill, you're tanking an active skill as well. And if you're running multiple marches, one might end up a bit closer to the enemy and they're going to get hit by more AoE and stuff. And it does get a little bit too hectic and a bit like almost unbalanced for either side, depending on who has more AoE going. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the things that I mentioned. I think back at the end of 2023, I made a video kind of talking about my wish list for this year. And we saw with them putting the new formations in the game, we saw 
uh, testudo formation and circle formation. Okay, maybe we're going more towards like a tanky meta throughout this year, which I think would kind of help with the problem that you're saying where like you can't even really do anything because there's so much open field AOE. But then we got Belisarius Prime. And it's like, and then also we got Herman Prime, who's a three target AOE half circle. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like we, uh, we definitely need some more tanky commanders just so that way we can stay in the field a little bit longer. I think that would be really nice for the game. Yeah. I think being able to fight more without having to go back to your city, which is the boring part would be nice. The formations, I mean, they could have been interesting with how they could implement them, mm -hmm. but uh, I think they're a bit weird. Like I think Tetsudo is very niche. It's more like for a shielding troop and then circle. I thought it was just a peacekeeping formation when I first saw it, like fighting barbarians and stuff just for the healing yeah i still can't think of a good use for the circle formation maybe it's because i'm not rally or garrison lead but i don't know doesn't seem that worth it to me there isn't really a good healing garrison anymore. I mean, you got constantine zenobia is not as meta so it's really just like constantine that could maybe benefit from this right and even then it's like he's got other stuff you'd rather probably have the damage over the five percent more healing with him right and he only heals once in a in an exchange right so i mean that five percent is like what, what's the point there you know yeah pretty much he heals like once in a blue moon once it'll heal him back to max but yeah yeah once an hour that's the cooldown which is wild cool so that's actually all the questions that i have here i guess this is a completely non-related to rise you're in you're in uh australia right yeah have you ever played the game tie the tasmanian tiger probably not is it like an xbox game pc What's it, it came on? out on gamecube gamecube i probably wasn't even alive when gamecube was like a real thing let me google it real quick oh my god bro my back hurts. i know what a gamecube is but let's see it released in 2001. I was not born. What year were you born? 2007. Brother. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I feel so, f I feel so old. Oh my God. Anyway, the reason that I brought that up is because when I was a kid, I played that game and the entire premise of the game is that you're running around the Australian outback. And uh, when I think of Australia, I think of that game, but uh, clearly I'm just a fucking boomer. So <laughs> <laughs> never mind. I thought man. you were going to say, I thought you were going to say you run around the outback and shoot spiders because whenever I'm on an interview with someone, they're like, oh, how many spiders are there? I'm like, oh, not many, honestly. I haven't seen many in the past year or so. Like, okay. There's probably one like in the dead window seal over there but that's probably it so i mean i that kind of the joke whenever people talk about australia is that like that's where all the crazy animals are from so you you don't encounter like komodo dragons and stuff on the daily or like kangaroos that beat you up you know i walk outside and i've got to have my um i don't have a gun i've got my chair at the ready to hit people with chairs and i jump around kangaroos and stuff you know it's my daily life i ride a blue lizard to school <laughs> there you go okay perfect <laughs> yeah that's pretty much exactly what i thought you know what's funny that you actually beat up lizards in that game that i was talking about Anyway, so um, <laughs> stupid boomer jokes aside, I appreciate you coming on for the, uh, I guess this was, this was this an interview. I don't think it was an interview. We kind of just talked about the game for this a little bit. like a chat. Yeah. Yeah. I just had some questions about, you know, being an archer purist, your experience doing that. Would you recommend players go and be a purist? I mean, in the current meta, probably not. We've seen most of the commanders right now from the, the Nevsky meta on until about the current meta. They're fairly balanced. You could arguably get away with being a purist for infantry cavs and archers, mm -hmm. but is it like really good for your account? Not really. You're missing out on a lot of stronger commanders. I mean, I can't say my Henry or my YSG is better than that of like a Leotro. I can't even say my Boudicca is better than Leotro. It's like not even close. So right. being a meta of one troop type, it screws you over because then you can't use those really strong commanders like Leotro. You can't use Nevsky, you can't use Joan. And I couldn't even set my account up to do that right now because I've got no equipment for those troop types. So probably not the best option in the current meta. Maybe in the future, we could see it come back again. Mm -hmm. But right now I'd say probably stick with that mixed troop type. Maybe have one troop type where you run two marches of them just mm -hmm. as that's your kind of main troop but yeah. i wouldn't go purist for one it just doesn't really make sense last question what is your opinion on ranged commanders right now range commanders uh well that, that's a bit of a, a weird one i think range commanders they're very niche they're very difficult to get into and they're going to start off as more of a whale thing and the thing with range commanders they would be definitely more popular if you could use an epic version in kvk2 i mean they would be way more popular way more people would use them mm -hmm. but there's no equipment for them in kvk2 you can't even get the v formation in kvk2 mm -hmm. and there's no epic range commanders so i think until we see that like integration in the really early game mm -hmm. they're just going to be like this weird niche side troop that few people use there's like one person in our kingdom who runs them i know mr siege on youtube does like a bunch of range commanders video like range commander videos mm -hmm. but they're more like a oh look at this but i'm never really going to be able to invest in it it's just too expensive 
too difficult. It's two new commanders. I need full new equipment. I couldn't really use them in the early game. It's like, I'd rather just stick with the main three troop types, which mm -hmm. are like tried and true. And you can use them in the early game. They've got civilizations. They've got easier to get city skins. So stuff like that is something that kind of makes them less like interesting really for most people. I'm really curious to see if the civilization this year is going to be a engineering civilization that brings along with it an epic engineering commander. And if that's the case, you know, I mean, hey, 2025 could be could be the year of the engineering commander. You never know. I mean, it could be if we see epic engineering commanders, a civilization and people running them more often. Yeah. That's like a full shift in the meta. Like, how do you deal with a side that's got like 50 engineering marches built up? Like you have to like suicide dive in and not too sure what you would do there to like take out those commanders. It would be very very unique like shift in the middle yeah and i think I, I feel like they're kind of in a good place right now where like people are using margaret gonzalo and they're getting great reports and it's like as a niche thing like if you want to go do that like that's great but if if they were a competitive meta alternative then i feel like the whales would just dominate the field and you couldn't even get to them like you said like they'd just be safely behind a, a you know across the river or bridge or something like that you know oh yeah they'd just be like demolishing you i mean i've tried to do a siege account i did it when they were first released no one really cared back then Ooh. but um the siege when i was in kvk one and two i tried to just use only siege it was gonna be a pure siege account mm -hmm. my goal was to run like a jonah matilda yeah. and it just sucked so bad i couldn't make videos doing it it was just that rubbish yeah. So that account's pretty much been devolved into a farm account for my main that I'm going to migrate over soon. So yeah. for now, that's like a pause project, but it's just that KVK one and two experience with them that turns you off because it's like, I have to invest in other commanders. I can't, you can't even get siege equipment in that KVK besides like gathering. Yeah. So you definitely like get screwed over there because my plan was use the siege equipment. I'll have a fairly strong march just because they have so many stats, mm -hmm. but you can't even unlock epic siege equipment until you're in season of conquest, which is just pretty insane yeah they also they released a new purple pick one fragment chest that includes engineering which means the old ones <laughs> don't include engineering which like that threw me off because i'm like players need to get their hands on engineering equipment if they ever want to make it a thing so it would have been nice for them to just like give us they like, just put it in the chest we already had so that way more players could get it maybe that was more of like a technical side of things because that maybe it just doesn't integrate very well i mean you could just like take everyone's chest away and give them the new ones though that could work right didn't they give us like free engineering though with like an event you get like the full set or something i don't remember that might be true because i might have full blueprints of them that I didn't actually craft yet. But, you know, if you want a talented or anything like that, then, you know, you, you kind of want more pe Yeah, you want more pieces. Yeah, you can't really talent them without those extra pieces, huh? All right, so that's that's pretty much it, unless you have anything else you want to throw in. No, nope, that's it. Sweet. Well, guys, I'm going to put Archer Syndicate's uh, YouTube link in the description below. Of course, go ahead, follow him over there, subscribe, like his videos, comment on his videos, all that stuff. Also, while you're down there, drop a thumbs up on my video, you know, subscribe to the channel all that other stuff. And that's pretty much it. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. Man, thanks for inviting me. It was fun. No problem. All right. We'll see you guys later.